So can you tell us who you are, why you came to Africa? Hi. How are you? Fine. Good. Well, Africa is like the lifelong dream. My name is Denise McNeil. I'm from Houston, Texas. And uh, I've always thought about being here on the continent. So I wanted to explore Ghana because my ancestry is here. So, Mom, you have something to tell us? Yes. Maybe if you can introduce yourself to us. Yes, it's good to see you again, a wow. second time around. Yeah, thank you. My name is Carol. Wow. I'm from Los Angeles, California. And the reason why I'm here is for two reasons. First of all, my sister, who invited me to come and share with her. And also, I used to live here in the 60s when Kwame Nkrumah was president. And I have not seen Ghana in over 40 years. So this gave me the opportunity when Denise invited me to come here, gave me an opportunity to go back and see all the places that I used to, where I lived. I went to Ghana International School, the children I played with, and maybe I'll be able to hook up with some of the people that I knew when I was a kid here who also stayed with us when we lived in California. And um, my mother did research. Her name was Rosa, and she wrote a book. She came in the 60s to see where her ancestors were because she was told by her father and grandfather that we were originally from Ghana. And so she wrote a book called River Face Homeward, and that's the name of her book. So what actually um, brought you guys to Ghana here? At least since you, you have been here for, I think, uh, in the days of our first president mm -hmm. uh, for Ghana, mm -hmm. at least you, you were, maybe you were outside um, Ghana before you came back, or maybe you were here before the independence and so forth. Well, 63 to 65, I was here. Oh, so okay. Kwame was still uh, president, president at the time, yeah. yes. And so when, Denise was researching Ghana, and she invited me to come. I said, oh, this will give me an opportunity. I can come back and see my roots as well. Wow. So that's why I'm here a second time. So who brought you to Ghana? Was it Denise who brought you to Ghana, or you brought Denise to Ghana? No, Denise brought me. So how did you get to um, explore Ghana? Well, I have an unusual story about Ghana. I met some people from here when I was living in Bangkok, Thailand. And I was already interested in the, in the continent. But once I met the people in Bangkok, they, they shared a lot of information with me about Ghana. And they told me a, a, a lot about African Americans who were living here. So that made me more interested to come in here. And now there's so many African Americans living here it's it's a it's a full community now so it was intriguing to me to learn more about ghana to actually see it for myself you know we for me i believe africa is a continent which doesn't need any um country to survive but in africa african americans seems to um understand africans and Africans seems to understand African Americans. I am on an agenda to bridge the gap between African Americans and the Africans. So in this case, you being an African American, I, I am an African now. How are we going to do that to solve our own problems to develop Africa, if I should ask? Well, one of the things that we have to do is eliminate the misconceptions about the continent. Mm -hmm. We still have people thinking that there are people here swinging from trees. There are people here running from lions. So we still have a lot of misconceptions because of how people here on the continent are presented in the media. And you guys have a misconception about us, your brothers and sisters, by how, you, how we are presented in the media on the other side. So it's going to be an educational process on both ends mm -hmm. because we haven't been in control of the media on either 
either side of the pond. So now first we have to start doing that. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing that can happen is that we can bring all of our skills and talents that we have to share with the people in Ghana and start and start forming small groups of people to accomplish some economic goals. I think that many of the Ghanaians are, are educated, but they're still lacking in terms of how to maximize all the resources. So I think that's, that's something that can happen with the experiences that we have working in the, in the U.S. for all of these years, all of these centuries. We, we've been the, the backbone of the American economy. We've not been given credit for it, but we've been the driving force to, to make things go in America. So if we could bring those same skills and talents that we were using for others to uplift and upgrade the people on the continent, I think we, we could be very successful that way. Ms. you have something to share with well, us? I agree 100% with Denise. And the most important thing that we hear is knowledge is truly the power. So we have to start with our children. We have to let them know what's going on because even my granddaughter, who's a straight A student, is not aware of what is happening within our surroundings. She too watches those uh, Netflix and Prime and you know, they just assume that, like Denise said, here we don't have transportation, we eat different food, you know, all of this is going on and this is what they believe. So we as well on the other side of the pond, we have to educate our children and we have to let them know. And fortunately for us, we know because we're here. So we can take that knowledge back and maybe they can start in the churches, in schools, uh, community activities that go on. Let these children know because all they see is what is on TV, the media, and that's all they know. You know, um, sorry to um, mention somebody's media platform or anything of that. Mm -hmm. In America, talking about this media stuff that we are, we are, we are mm -hmm. talking about and the education purpose and so forth. Mm -hmm. This American media, some are projecting Africa, the negative side of Africa, mm -hmm. to, to people within America or maybe people mm -hmm. within Europe or any other continent. But we know that Africa is not like that. Africa is not a right. bush. Africa is good. It's just a good place for mm -hmm. everybody to be. Africa is a peaceful place to be. But because of this um, thing that they've been showing, the media has been showing to, yes, mm -hmm. to people out there, it's making some of the African Americans afraid to move to Africa. Mm -hmm. So talking about this educational thing that you want us to educate people and so forth, fine, we are going to educate. But what are the things that we have to put in place to educate the people for them to know that this is how Africa looks like. Or maybe Africa is not a place for, for, for the poor. Africa is not a place, or maybe it's not a bush that everybody is. Right. Yeah, so how do we do that? Maybe we can, maybe we can promote local uh, media platforms here, or local filmmakers here. So mm -hmm. the local filmmakers can give a snippet of what a typical lifestyle is here. And then you, you bring in another perspective mm -hmm. of how people actually live their daily lives on the continent. Because that hasn't been done. Even National Geographic, uh, they're not doing a really good job. And everybody watches National Geographic, but they don't show the whole picture. So people are seeing a small presentation of what is what the reality is. They're not mm -hmm. seeing the whole picture. So if we could promote some local movie producers here, that would be a great thing. Mm -hmm. Like what they did yeah. a week or so ago. Okay. Right. And the screening in Accra, right? The screening yes. in Accra. But here is the case. We, we I'm, I'm a producer myself. Mm -hmm. I promote videos and, and I produce videos and so forth, movies and so forth. But in such case, maybe you might, you might shoot the movie, mm -hmm. but giving it to the people to show for some African Americans mm -hmm. to watch to change these misconceptions about mm -hmm. about what they are mm -hmm. saying, they will never show it to us. So what do we do? 
Well, you okay. like I said, if we are you saying what we need to do? Yes. And basically what I was trying to explain earlier is the fact that we need to put it out there where people join and they are communicating, which is usually through the church, uh, through, I could say media. Social clubs. Social and, clubs. And, and anywhere where people gather. Right. So it doesn't have to be like, a million people, it can start with 10. Mm -hmm. And then 10 can grow into 20 and 20 can grow into 100. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of times what happens here is because people begin to feel overwhelmed. So then they feel like they can't do anything. Mm -hmm. So if the three of us start a project and we reach out to others, then three is gonna increase in the number. Right. And and the more people that we reach, they're going to reach out to others. But I think here it's, it's a problem for people on the continent and people even on the diaspora. They get so overwhelmed with thinking they need a million dollars to do anything, then they, they end up not doing anything. So we want people to feel that they can make a difference. They don't have to be a, a, a multinational corporation in order to, to, to make an accomplishment in joining one continent to, an, to another. And we're really not that far. We're like straight over there. You go straight over there. You're in America. Yeah. Straight. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's possible wow. and it's doable. Mm -hmm. So we can't let the, the small things become big obstacles. We can't let... Problems become the underlying factor as to how we do nothing. Right. We have to see the problems as possibilities. And each one teach one. You know, you heard that before, each one teach one. Mm -hmm. if, if we continue to reach out and educate people when we're presented with an opportunity to educate, and that's every day. Mm -hmm. When you're talking to somebody and you say, yeah, I, I, I was in Ghana last month and, and I had this wonderful meal at this local restaurant of chicken and rice and whatever you know people are eating chicken and rice all over the world yeah. it just all depends it's on what just, kind of yeah. spice you put in the chicken right, and rice right. so people will begin to understand that as human beings we have more things in common than we have differences right and when you like we met you as an individual and when we begin to talk and share We'll say, oh, yeah, I do that, too. Mm -hmm. So you, you're not that much different from me, you know, even though we might speak different languages. We're doing maybe, you know, maybe you play chess or maybe I play chess or, or checkers or maybe you surf on the water. Maybe I surf on the water. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, you, you like surfing or you like uh, soccer. I like soccer. So the more we exchange and share. We, we begin to break down barriers. I guess that's what I'm saying. We break down some barriers. Mm -hmm. Barriers. So. so, in your own point of view, how would you describe Africa to somebody? It's a magical place. Mm -hmm. It's a magical place. When people ask me about Africa, I always remind them that everything you need to survive and to thrive is here on the continent. This cell phone that people say, oh, you know, it's Chinese, it's American, it's African because every component of this cell phone is found here on the continent. Everything that you need to make this is here on the continent. There's, there's nothing that's lacking about here. You want to build a fighter jet, you go to Congo and you get all the components for the fighter jet in Congo. You know, you want some pretty jewelry, Zambia, Tanzania, South Africa. Ghana has the gold. Ghana has the gold. So I don't, I don't yeah. know what people need or want that is not here. When I'm when I'm on the continent, I eat nothing out of a can or a box. Zero. We cook everything fresh. We're cooking everything fresh, and it's and it's we have all the 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 herbs and vegetables and and fruits here. 
we go to the open market. So, so we want you know, we want some black eyed peas. We can have some black eyed peas. Right. We want some greens. We can have mm -hmm. some greens. We want some sweet potatoes, some yams. Anything you, mm -hmm. you that your palate desires is here. So people just have a, the misconception about, about the whole continent, not just about some parts of the continent. They have the misconception about the entire continent. And the beautiful ocean there, the beautiful, powerful ocean there, you know, for people to enjoy if they're they're visiting here or they decide to live here. Mm -hmm. There's just so many magical things about right. the continent. And no matter what part of the continent you visit, it's something something offered to you that's special. I guess I'm saying that I don't want you guys to, to look at us as problem solvers. You know, like we come here, we fix all the problems that are existing in in Ghana. We have to work together as a unit and everybody contribute whatever their skills and talents are. And we all, God has blessed us each with a skill and a talent. And whatever that skill and, or talent is, we have to put it on the table so that everybody can eat from the table. It can't be just one person or one group. And, and, and goals goals have to be set, you know? It's like, okay, what are we doing? Are we, our goal is to get over there to that hammock. That's our destination. We're all trying to get to the hammock. Wow. Do you understand what yeah, I'm saying? I, 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 I understand. Right. So, so as you are in Ghana, now let me ask you one simple question. At least you, you, you have, have tasted this Ghanaian food and so forth. So which, which one of the food is your best? Uh, I don't really have a best. Uh, I'm enjoying the freshness and the, and the availability of many different kinds of food. So I don't have a favorite. So do you intend to establish a business in Ghana as you're in Ghana now? Not really. I don't. So how would you be able to bridge the gap between the African Americans and African if you are not ready to establish anything in Ghana? Because I can mentor people. I can give my skills and talents to others. I don't have to establish a business here to make a contribution. You know, I have many different skills and talents that I can offer someone that don't involve me having a business. Everybody doesn't have to have a business. Some of us like being retired, you know? We don't want to really go to work. I, I started working when I was 14 years old and I'm not really trying to have a job. But I will share my knowledge and I will mentor young people who are, who are able to hear the message because everybody's not receptive and everybody's not able to hear the message okay so you know we are we are in the sixth month of uh, what do you call it 2023 i'm just trying to throw a challenge to you that um since you want to mentor people to come to africa i'm challenging you to bring more than 300 people to africa this year i don't know if i can i will try but I don't know if I can step up to 300 people. Because remember I told you, we have our own issues across the pond. So in order to bring 300 people, we have to break down barriers, assumptions, misconceptions. And that's not easy to do. That's not like you do that. Because I, I know a lot of people, but still in their mind, even though I'm telling them about the place, still they have this picture in their mind of this being like wild if i can use that terminology this is like wild uh something that existed 500 years ago you know and we're 2023 people have cell phones here we have bolt we've got uber we got yango we have you know different forms of transportation we have a whatsapp that allows us to communicate with any country in the world that allows WhatsApp, because you know some countries don't allow WhatsApp, okay? But at least with Ghana, you can communicate with your with your kids, with your loved ones, anytime you feel like it. So that's already a barrier that's that's broken down. So it's a big job, but if we if we work together as a unit, it's not impossible. I think the rain is coming, so you might be in a hurry to also move to Accra by then. So um, what would you tell your friends out there that are watching you on my YouTube channel? 
I would tell them to put this on the list of countries to visit. And there are 54 countries in Africa, so I'm not going to say only Ghana. I would say come visit a couple of countries and you select your own favorite. But there are a lot of beautiful things here to experience. And I just want to tell you this in, in our closing of this interview. I was in a place called Pram Pram a couple of months ago, and I met this American couple. It was it was an interracial couple, actually. The, the husband was uh, Ghanaian, and the wife was a white American. And so they made a decision to move here to Ghana, and they had kids. And what impressed me about the thing that the couple told me was, the freedom that their kids enjoy living in Ghana. Their kids can go out and ride their bikes. They can run and play. They can go to the neighbor's house. They can sit at the table and eat with others. I have grandkids. And when my grandkids were young, we couldn't even allow them to stay out in the front yard alone. It was dangerous. And we were in a supposedly safe residential community. So if you have kids, this is a place where the kids can be, they can, they can enjoy being a child here in Ghana. Wow. We, we don't have that. It's like a luxury for us over there. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a high degree of crime. It's, it's a lot of hostility. The people are angry. Even if you want to just greet somebody or, or befriend somebody, everybody's like pushing you back, pushing you away. But the people here have a good heart. I'm not saying it's a perfect place. There's, I don't believe there's any perfect places. But the people here have a, a lot of compassion for others. And they show you a lot of love. And I noticed that most of the time when Americans come here, African Americans included in the group, if somebody's really nice to them, they're like, what does he want from me? Or what does she want from me? And the person's just trying to show you love. But we're so used to, in our society, people having an agenda for everything that they do. They do something for you, but I want something back. I'm going to give you this, but I want you to give me that. They don't just give you things with a pure and open heart. And I see that as such a blessing in Ghana because the people can show you compassion. You know, if I fall down on this concrete right now, somebody will run and they will pay, help pick me up. If I fall down on the concrete in America, somebody will pick up their phone, they'll start filming me <laughs> and put me on YouTube or Facebook or something. This respectful attitude. <laughs> yes, it's, so, it's just the mindset and the spirituality of people here is so refreshing, I'm going to say that. And you have to keep in mind with these obstacles that people face here, that Africans were the original people. They were the inventors. They were the scientists. They were the doctors. They were the astronomers, the astrologists. So we just need to return to the greatness that we came, that we entered this earth. We invented a medicine. We invented medicine. So why are we sick? I'm just asking the question. I'm just yeah. putting the question out there. Well. We invented medicine, so why are we sick? Because we got off the path. Yeah. We let somebody else convince us that our our knowledge and our medicine was not the best. I have somebody behind me, my camera back in me. <laughs> well, you know, if if you if you understand history, if you understand history, some of these things become answered for you. Wow. Yeah, we used to be very confident, very self-sufficient people, but we fell off the wagon some kind of way. And now we find ourselves in a position where others have, have placed themselves above as superior to us. Wow. And we believe it. We believe it because we don't have the confidence, right? We talked about confidence. Yeah. You don't have confidence. People can do a lot of stuff and you have to know your value. 
That is it. You got to know your worth. Because if you know your own self value, nobody can take advantage of you. Yeah. Yeah. So. But when you don't know, when you don't understand the value, people can tell you and do any kind of thing to you. Right. So that's the, that's the that's the yeah. position that we find ourselves yes. in. Yes. Yeah. Did yeah. you look?